a private investigator, and today alongside a psychic and an otherwise unnotable person, all three of us are attempting to determine which of our subjects has had a botched surgery. There are different waveforms of energy that are very subtle energy forms to determine who is lying and who's telling the truth. I'm gonna come in with the friendly angle, be kind of non-assuming, non-threatening, and then hit them with some hard questions that might catch them off guard and may slip up some information. All right, let's bring in our medical test subjects. Okay, uh, how about you, sir? Sure. Okay. Uh, what's your name? Brendan. Brendan. Yes. All right, how old are you, Brendan? I'm 33. Okay. How long have you been in LA? Uh, just shy of five years. So tell me about your, your medical experiences. When I was a sophomore college, it was 2008, I was playing a game of pickup basketball at my school and I rolled my ankle super hard. There's like these uh, ligaments that attach to like the middle part of your ankle and when you roll it that hard, it can like pull out little chunks of the bone that are still attached to the top end of the ligament. Mm. And so you have two options. One, you can hope that the bone dissolves, which sounded gross. Or two, put it back in, let it reset, and then like that should be fine. The glue dissolves on its own as it heals. I went with the surgery route. After about a week, it was way worse. It was swollen, it was like dark, stitches weren't healing right, so I had to go back in and they were like, okay, like we'll do new x-rays. Where'd you go to school? University of Arkansas in Portsmouth. Oh, okay. Yeah. They did another set of x-rays. They're like, every now and then somebody will have a reaction, like your body rejects the glue, basically. So they did the x-rays and they're like, yeah, it looks like your body doesn't like the glue and you've got like a like a little cyst forming. So they're like, we're just gonna open it back up, scrape that out, and then like, you should be good. Open it back up and it wasn't a nodule. From the actual glue, there's like a little seal they put that keeps the glue dry, like with any glue, keeps from drying out. And there was like a little piece of that plastic that was like next to the little like crack where they had filled in with the glue in my ankle and they'd sewed it back up and my body actually had no problem with the glue. The glue was fine. It was rejecting the piece of plastic that was in my foot. So they took that out, restitched it back up and then after about a week or so it was fine. Obviously they didn't use like an Elmer's glue <laughs> bottle, but it is. are you telling me it's some sort of protective biohazard seal that like kind of flaked off when they were putting the glue in you or yeah. where did this plastic come from? They said if you picture like a, like a nozzle for glue, that like they keep a little like thin piece of, they say plastic, but I'm assuming it's flimsy. That's like on the tip of that to like keep the glue from drying out. So basketball injury, surgery, they, they, they cut you open to put glue in there to hold, a, to put some bone back, Correct. right? And then there was a, a foreign material that got made its way in there with the glue and your body didn't handle that too well. Yeah. Okay. How old were you? Uh, I would have been 22. Okay. So uh, senior year, right? Uh, junior. Okay. So are you from Fort Smith? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the university's in the town? Yeah. Okay, right on. Yeah. How, what's the town like? It's, it's, it's a college town. Honestly, not really. The town's like about 100,000 people, but it's a, it's a small school. Really? Yeah. Without counting the students? We don't get like a lot of people who come from like far away to go to UA Fort Smith. So how many students were there? Oh, I have no idea. Okay. You live in NoHo, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did it hurt? The ankle? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I think I'm all right for now. Okay. Uh, Brendan, thanks for your time. Destiny, come join me. Destiny, how old are you? I'm 25. Okay. Where are you from? From Seattle. What year were you born? 1994. So what's your story? Okay, are you ready? Okay, you're ready. All right, so back in 2009. You're not gonna write that down? Go on. Okay, in 2009, right to like split down the middle of my chest, I had a cyst. It was kind of like small and annoying and I kind of just ignored it until one day I was like, wow, it's kind of painful and like felt kind of like lumpy and kind of nasty. <clears throat> so being, wow, 15 at the time, I was like, mom, I need to go to the doctor. So she's like, okay. She took me to the doctor. This was a doctor I had never seen before. Doctor comes in and he's like looking at it and he's like, oh yeah, that's, that's infected, there's like fluid in there. Reaches down into his little goodie bag and pulls out a scalpel and proceeds to slice it open. And 
This is at his office, right? Yes. Okay. That was just like really it. He then bandaged me up. Pardon me for having to ask, no, but but please. the cyst is it's it's kind of like right between your breasts. Right basically. between, yeah, literally okay. like on a bone. Like. On on the breastplate. Yes. Okay, gotcha. The way you tell the story is he turned around and he's just brandishing yeah. a scalpel. I mean, Not he quite. <laughs> he picked it up and he and he walked across the room and then are you laying down? I'm sitting up. You're sitting up. Okay. And you said was there other uh, fluids coming out? There were. Like what? I don't know what it was. Can you describe them? It smelled very bad. Okay. Then it was dark in color. Can you be more specific? I can't. It's really gross. I don't know if it was like, it was blood and like maybe pus and like, I don't know. Was it like black or brown? It was or? brown. Okay. Yeah. If it was black, that'd be really scary. Was it, it was brown. Was it as fluid as the blood or was it like thicker, more like gelatinous or jelly? It was um, a little thicker to my knowledge. This was a while back, so. All right, I think I've got enough to go on for the time being, but I, I may need you later. Okay. But uh, thank you. Yep, thank you. I'm Edward. Edward. Uh, what do you do for a living? I'm a video editor here at BuzzFeed. All right, what's your medical experience, so allegedly? My botch surgery happened um, back in high school. It was my graduation year. Uh, I was 18 and I was actually driving over to meet up uh, my girlfriend at the time for a date. As I was driving over there, I got into a bad accident where they hit me on the driver's side and one of my ribs had punctured my lung. And as they were uh, mending it and sewing it up and everything, the airways were getting constricted. They were, they were coming and tightening up. And now because of that surgery, after that, I developed asthma because now mucus kind of enters the pathway and is it gives me respiratory issues. So I never had asthma before. So when did that happen? And that was back in 2009. I okay. was 18, yeah. What car were you driving? I had a, well, I still have it, my Toyota Corolla. The same car? Yeah. Yeah, 10 years, still living. Even after this catastrophic accident? Yeah. Were you knocked unconscious? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I, I kind of remember bits and pieces. How long were you in the hospital? I was there for two weeks. So what, what time of year did this happen? This was, uh, it was like February because yeah, it was getting closer to like graduation time and all that stuff. So okay. it was Valentine's Day time. It was right before Valentine's Day. So were you back in school after a few weeks or something like that? It took about like a month, month and a half until until I was able to, to like they let me get back in and all that stuff. All right, uh, I think I have enough for the time being. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I've got some notes. I've got to do some soul searching. Destiny, would you, um, can you uncross your hands I for me? I can. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so and hard. I'm going to ask you just to say your first name just one time for me. Destiny. Okay. Destiny, have you ever been in so much pain that you went into doubt if it would ever end? Yes. And did it bring you a lot of doubt? I did. You you struck me as a very independent person, and oh. yes. But did you ever feel that you were victimized to some point, or something happened that changed the course of your life slightly that you had nothing to do with? I don't know. Not that I can think of. But I'm like rethinking everything in life. <laughs> like maybe. Is it easy for you to forgive people and move forward with life? <clears throat> It depends. And have you ever um, had to take pain pills or anything like that of any sort to get out of pain? I have. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, yeah. Destiny. Thank of you. You're beautiful. Lady. Thank you. I want to talk to you, sure. please. Sure. <laughs> May I have your first name just one time, please? My first name is Edward. Edward, have you ever? felt a lot of doubt or lacking in direction in your life? At times in life, I guess. Have you ever had to take pain pills for anything or? Yes, a medication, yes. Was it long-term pain or pain that you felt that you couldn't get out of? No, it's long-term, yeah. And um, did you feel that you uh, suffered as a result of it emotionally? Emotionally, yeah, it's your question, yeah. Did you ever have a sense that you were a victim or something that happened that was out of your control that changed your life? I can say yes, that's happened. And if someone were to, you know, tell you something, you know, for example, a doctor, and would you go to get a second opinion or would you believe that individual? Yes. Um, Okay, is this just typically how you've always been? Maybe, but more after an incident, more, even more extreme. Okay, are you optimistic about your future? Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, thank you.
Thank you. You're my next victim. <laughs> uh, may I ask your name, please? Brendan. Let me see. Have you ever felt like a victim or that you've been victimized in any particular situation or situations? Sure, yeah. Okay, and when we talk about like feeling like a victim, what exactly does that mean to you? I guess not having control over traumatic situations. Do you have uh, confidence in yourself now as an adult to overcome adversities and circumstances? Yes. Okay. Have you ever been in long-term mental, physical, emotional pain? Oh, sure, yeah. And have you ever felt that you were uncertain there was an end to that or? Probably not. I, I think I've always been, maintained some level of optimism. Did that affect your life in any way? Yeah, I, I think it probably kept me a little um, indecisive for a long time. Okay, and when you felt that, did it feel that uh, it was just out of, your, out of your control when you felt that? Yeah. Okay, if you had to describe that feeling, what would that feeling be, just to sum it up? A lack of control or clear direction for, for myself. Okay, was it easy for you to reestablish direction? Yeah, eventually I, I got the hang of it. Are you generally happy in life? Yeah. Has it been your whole life or just part of your life? More recently. Like I think I was, <clears throat> when I was younger, it was rockier. But then as I've become an adult, I've, I've found myself and, and been a lot happier. Okay. All righty. Nice, nice meeting Very you. Very nice to meet you. Thank you so much. I've made my decision after looking at the energetic patterns of information. I've been able to, I believe, determine who has had the botched surgery. Bring in that lineup. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Alex. Hey there, I'm Edward. Nice to meet you. You too, you too. Have you ever had a botched surgery? Yes. Mm. So back in 2009, I got into a bad car accident. One of my ribs puncturing my lung, that took me to the emergency room. And when the surgeons came over to try to repair my lung, that's where um, they were, they messed up something where my air paths were more constricted and now more mucus is developing and blocking the air passage. So I have respiratory issues because of the surgery. And yeah, it developed into asthma that now I actually have to carry around my albuterol to, uh, yeah, pretty much maintain my asthma and everything because of that botched surgery. Can you tell me more about the accident that led to this? I was on the way up to a date and everything and I was, um, and as I was trying to turn to the left on the intersection, that's when uh, Nissan Altima came in and, and they hit me uh, to the side and on my driver's side door. And that's where uh, pretty much it was a collision where like the rib cage was, was what ended up puncturing my lung. You have some sort of like lesion in your lung that creates the asthma or the surgery repairing the lung. As they were trying to repair and heal up with skin skin cell tissue and all that stuff, like a fake um, try skin to- Skin graft? Yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. skin graft to like put over the, the punctured. Um, that's where when they were trying, the, the pathway that goes with, out of the lung and for the whole bronchial and all that stuff to be able to breathe, that's where um, it got tightened and, and so instead of opening up, instead of being my normal size like it was before, now that it's constricted, that's where like, I have respiratory issues from uh, breathing going in and out of the lung. Uh, great, well, that's, that's all I need, thank all right. you. Appreciate it, thank you so much. I'll interview you next. Hi. Hi. Alex. Destiny, hello, nice to hello. meet you. Hello, nice to meet you. Good morning. Have you had a botched surgery before? I have. Hmm, same as Edward, huh? <laughs> Same as Edward. But there can only be one. Basically, I had a, like a lump. It was a cyst, really. Um, but I think it had become infected. On your hand? No, it was actually like on my chest area, like kind of right okay. down by my stomach almost, mm -hmm. like in between my rib cages. And I kind of noticed it. it was getting bigger and really painful. And I was like, oh my God, like I did what most people did. I ignored it until it got infected. And I was like, oh my God, mom, I need to go to the doctor. Like. We need to get this checked out. So my mom comes with me to the doctor. We see the doctor. He looks at it. He's touching it. He calls his nurse in for backup. The nurse is standing in the corner. My mom's standing in the corner. He stares at it and he goes, hmm. Pulls out a scalpel, slices it open. Right there? Right there. No medication? None. No. None whatsoever. 
He took the scalpel and he just sliced it open. That's not even a surgery. That's just like him walking up and being like, yeah, I feel like you have mm -hmm. to do some paperwork or something. Yeah, no, nothing was signed. And nothing. then what happened? The, did you just bleed out on the... I just bled out and he was like, nurse, can you get, like, help me? And she's just standing there like, like she couldn't even move because she was like so shook. And he was like, nurse. And she was like, oh, like whatever. And I cleaned it up and they bandaged me up and that was that. And your mom was with you? Were you living with your mom? Yes. That's all I need to know. Last but not least, sir. Hello. Hello. Alex. Brendan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have you had a botched surgery? Wouldn't you know it? Yes, I've had a botched surgery. Three out of three. Hmm? Interesting. What did you eat this morning? <laughs> Two pieces of beef jerky. Yikes. <laughs> Let's hear about the surgery. Mine was actually 2008, which this is a real bad time frame for surgeries. Apparently. I guess so, yeah. Wow. Uh, I was playing basketball at rec center at my college. I rolled my ankle super hard. Thought it was a bad sprain. Turns out you have these little ligaments that are attached to like the middle part of your ankle bone. Mm -hmm. And if you roll your foot under yourself like I did, those little ligaments can pull out like a tiny chunk of the bone. Mm. They gave me two options. One, I could do uh, like nothing and let it, uh, the bone hope, in their words, hopefully dissolve, which sounded gross. Okay. Or they can take this like medical glue and like cut you open, put the little chunk back in and this glue that then dissolves like while it heals. Mm -hmm. So I opted for that. Within like, I don't know, the first week after the surgery, it was really gross and swollen and infected. So I had to go back and they said, oh, this is rare. Like sometimes people have reactions to the glue. Like, we'll do another scan. So they have an x-ray again. In the x-ray, they're like, oh, you've developed like a little cyst. There's like a little nodule where we put the bone back in. We gotta scrape that out. They cut it back open and found that instead of a little nodule, there's a tiny piece of thin plastic that they used to seal the glue, like kind of like plastic wrap to keep it uh -huh, from drying out. Uh -huh. That was like not in the bone, but was left like kind of next to it. Great. And my body was actually fine with the glue. It was rejecting the piece of plastic in my ankle. And so they had to scrape all that out, re-sew it back up, and then in a couple weeks that was fine. Oh, interesting, interesting. So let's back it up. Sure. You were at a rec center at your school. What school did you go to? University of Arkansas in Fort Smith. Okay. You didn't think it was completely hurt. How long was it when you rolled your ankle to when you actually went in no. to the... Yeah, I was hoping it was just a bad sprain, uh -huh. um, but I went like from the rec center to, I called my girlfriend at the time, She because of my right ankle, I couldn't drive. So mm -hmm. she took me to the hospital. So I was, at, with, I was at the hospital within a couple hours. And they looked at your ankle. They're <laughs> like, we could just leave it alone. Your bone will dissolve. <laughs> yeah. That's the term, dissolve. Well, they did x-rays. I feel and, like that's not a good thing. Yeah. Dissolving. Well, that's why I opted for the surgery. Mm -hmm. They said that the chunk is small enough that it will probably just dissolve. Okay, great. That's all I need to know. I know who's telling the truth. It's the moment of truth. Now we will each give our decisions on who has had the botched surgery. I think Destiny had the truthful medical experience. It's been a hard decision um, based on what I can see from the energetic patterns. I believe that it was Edward who has had a botched surgery. Based on my regular knowledge of regular things <laughs> and conducting my regular interrogation, uh, I believe it was Brendan who had the botched surgery. Oh. I, everybody did a, did a fantastic job. So Edward has that inhaler on him. I began to think it was basically kind of late laying it on a little too thick from Edward. So I kind of discounted Edward. And then it came down to Destiny and Brendan, and uh, I mean, you know, ankle mishaps in basketball happen all the time, and he's got, he's got a pretty legit story. But I think I said earlier, Destiny was kind of physically uh, disgusted by the details of her own story. I personally made the choice of Edward because I felt that when I asked about pain, I felt that he had more intimate knowledge. I chose to ask indirect questions. Um, and I realized my thought process on that was limited in the moment. Destiny here, although she wouldn't take off her hat, and it's one of the ways that I look for energy, I feel that 
she's never uh, fully felt like a victim. I think you have to have some type of victim mentality, which I think speaks to uh, her character and her ability to overcome adversity and empower herself. Brandon, I felt um, he's had probably a decent life and not, uh, although he seems very evolved, probably not experienced a lot of adversity or felt like a, uh, a victim. So. That's where I came to my decision. Thank you all so much. I went about it um, very mundane. For Edward, uh, I noticed that he kind of had a lot more details starting to get jumbled. Um, different things like pointing out like my lung, oh, I mean my rib, that kind of gave it away for me. And I just didn't think that asthma could be contracted from a botched surgery. The main reason why I picked Brendan was because Destiny's story seemed so absurd to me that like a doctor would just pull out a knife and just slice open something just like that. But I guess truth is stranger than fiction.